I was talking about the market forces because that's kind of where I wanted to start. <clears throat> Spencer had asked us to talk about uh, proven methods to improve air service. And so I can tell you again, echoing something that Kelly said, is um, at our little airport in upstate New York, in the past four years, our entertainments have doubled. So I can tell you that a proven, honest to goodness, no fail way to improve your air service <coughs> is to be in the right place at the right time. And uh, the Marcellus Shale has been awesome for our airport. So everyone go out and, uh, and do some natural gas growing. <laughs> we, we love hydrofracking. That. <laughs> um, aside from that, though, what I wanted to talk about was uh, a project that I was uh, involved in a couple of years ago um, back in the Northwest. A bunch of us airports got together and said, you know, rather than competing with each other, we all are suffering from the same sorts of issues. So how can we work together to help air service uh, on a regional basis? So. Um, we got together and put together what we call the Northwest Regional Air Service Initiative. Um, and it was kind of unique because it was um, a collaboration between um, OAMA, the Oregon Airport Management Association, LAMA, the Washington Airport Management Association. Idaho wanted to get in on it too, but you know, I am OAMA, OAMA just got a little bit too. <laughs> Uh, and then um, the state aeronautics agencies of both uh, Oregon and Washington. And then not only that, but we can say we brought the federal government into the collaboration as well because we got a small community air service development grant. And what we were trying to do was um, educate our communities, uh, well first off, determine what our joint issues were, what the hurdles were, what our challenges were, and then help educate our communities on how they could best go about getting the air service that they needed. Um, so we spent a um, year and a half or two years, I think, really just putting together um, what all of our challenges were. And, um, we recognized that um, in, in the Northwest, there are a lot of small communities and two hubs, PDX and, and SeaTac. Um, and so we all were suffering or thriving or not based on what happened at the hubs. And we had absolutely no control over that. So that was a, one issue that we identified is um, what the hub airports are doing has a big impact on what we can or can't do at the small airports. Um, the changing, something we've talked about quite a bit today already, the changing fleet, um, the turboprops going away, um, or uh, Q200s moving up to the Q400s, um, the, the advent of the RJs was a real threat to the smaller communities. Um, and we found that just having um, the, the business leaders and the, the political leaders in small communities understand how air service development works is a big, big issue. Um, Kelly said that, you know, the, the main question she always gets is, when Southwest coming? I was at an airport where we had three flights a day on a Q200, that's all. And people ask me that question. And I would just be flabbergasted that they, there was such a huge gulf between where we were and what people really thought was reasonable. Um, so we set out then this consortium of all of us to uh, figure out a way to, to educate the communities about how it really works. Um, we put together a guidebook that really um, talked about uh, um, aircraft fleet dynamics, um, markets, pricing structures, the whole um, concept really that airlines are a business with profit motive, not a utility. And so, you know, if a, if a mayor goes to an airline CEO and says, um, we need service to San Francisco, so why don't you give it to us? <laughs> That's... I,